Hey guys, this is Ty Force Reacts, and I am back to react to Linkara's History of Power Rangers, Dino Thunder. So, okay, you may be a bit confused, this isn't something I normally react to, and you're right, and I don't plan to react to anything else from, from History of Power Rangers after this. Unless maybe RPM, but I don't think he's gonna be, re I don't think Linkara's gonna be remaking that. But, anyway, um, yeah, in the past, for the past few years, Linkara has been, um, remaking his old history of Power Rangers videos, starting with Mighty Morphin, and then, like, a year, a year or so ago, maybe, I think it was a year ago, I don't know, um, he did the remake of his video on Power Rangers Ninja Storm, and I really liked that, and I was just like, you know what, when he inevitably does History of Power Rangers for Dino Thunder, you know, remakes that video, um, I'm, I want to, you know, react to it, because, Here's the thing, Dino Thunder is the season I grew up on. Like, granted, I did see a bit of um, Ninja Storm 2, but I didn't grow up on it in the same way I did Dino Thunder. Oh man, to this day, Dino Thunder remains my favorite season. Is it because of childhood, childhood nostalgia goggles? Yes. Anyway, but if I was being completely, like, 100% critical, it'd probably still be number two in my heart. Um, it'd probably still be number two with RPM being number one. Um... But e either way, Dino Thunder holds that special place in my heart, and I will forever love it. And let me put it this way. Like, some of the first episodes I saw were the White Ranger episodes, you know, the, where he beats up literally all of the Rangers, and it was just the coolest thing ever. Um, so, yeah, like, to those who grew up on the original Mighty Morphin and experienced Tommy Oliver, you know, being the Green Ranger and beating up all those Rangers, yeah... The Disney era of Power Rangers had its own equivalent in the form of Trent Mercer as the evil White Ranger. It was really good. <laughs> it was really freaking good, and I loved it. But, yeah, either way, um, yeah, d just all, 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 I, I love every, pretty much everything about Dino Thunder. It's really cool. Like, Kira, I think, was, like, my first childhood crush. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but, yeah, I'm, and then I for when I remember when I was trying to find um episodes of Power Rangers Dino Thunder to watch on YouTube because we could get away with it back in the day. Um I that's how I came across Linkara and you know his history of Power Rangers videos and so here we are. Um yeah, and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed learning about the other seasons of the show and it, it's how I really got into RPM because I never really gave it a second glance. I just thought, oh, it's just another season of Power Rangers. No, it turns out it's one. Of, it's probably the best season. It's probably one of the best seasons out there. So, but yeah. Um. Anyway, but that's RPM. This is Dino Thunder, and I'm really excited to get into this. So let's just jump right in, and we'll start things up in three, two, one. Oh, flashing lights. Oh, he's never he's never done that before. Okay. I don't have episodes. Okay. The Pink Ranger power and just in time. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. yeah. And there was that period where time kind of reversed and we yeah. all became children and a bunch of It was of a very abridged episode us, and Aisha recap. behind in Africa in the past except she became a teenager again when time was restored and her family moved over to Africa too and then this girl named Tanya joined us and well, I guess all of that wasn't important. Also, Kimberly dumped me. Welcome, yeah. my friends, mm. to Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Yeah, all right. As I have to frequently remind people, what you are watching now is the second version of History of Power Rangers. Yes. I finished History of Power Rangers in 2015. Or, to be more accurate, I was caught up in 2015. Right. I only had to do videos it. every two years after that for any new series being produced. The original Dino Thunder video was done in 2011. The old versions don't exist except for anyone who downloaded and archived them or re-uploads them elsewhere. Yeah. And I should have had these re-recordings and re-edits done is, by Which is now. how, you and know... aside from rewriting some gags yeah, which is how I found more background show. information than I originally included, I really don't want to keep bringing up more recent developments that happen in relation to the show or its actors in these redone versions. It just makes things more complicated, especially when it's in relation to tragedies. But I can't ignore it. Oh Over no, the there was like another tragedy, just star. like with the last People two seasons. People are seeing these for the first time, have never seen the version from 2011. 
And if I don't talk about it, people will wonder why oh, the no. hell I didn't. I, I, Dino I have Thunder no features idea. the return of Jason David Frank as okay, Tommy, yeah. not only mm -hmm. as an active ranger, but the mentor of the but season. The mentor, yeah. In the original and, video, I okay. did an analysis of the character's mental state because of an episode's plot and the psychological uh, effects that have been possibly oh, hurting him as a result yeah, of being a ranger and considering what so happened to Jason I am retaining David Frank. that analysis for this video, uh, but he's, remember, he's keeping Tommy the analysis, Oliver was but, not like, the same person as Jason David right, Frank. Yeah, JDM keep in mind, they are the same person. character and I am talking about the and, character. The yeah. analysis of Tommy is not a reflection of JDF or what led to his tragic passing mm. in 2022. With that, let's get into Dino Thunder. Okay. I love the Dino right. Thunder theme okay. song. It, it, it did take a few listens to finally let it yeah, catch Dino on. Yeah, Dino Thunder's great. A strong rock the, the, rhythm. The, the theme I really song's great. there more incidental music using bits of this. But okay, if that's the only the tragedy we're talking Ninja about, Storm. like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Like, we kind of had to bring up the season Jason begins David Frank with the dying, so. Day of the Dino. In a flashback, we see this mysterious martial arts expert escaping from an island as so it explodes mysterious. around him, chased by the Stingwingers' as demonic cousins. Now keep in mind, yes, like, Tommy, I grew up on Dino Thunder, but I also grew explosion. up, like, with the old VHS of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, you know, with Ivan and all that. Several years later, I never made the connection with the Tommy and that movie and Tommy and Dino Thunder were the same person. the old days, he was totally into science archaeology and teaching right i mean clearly this was the career path he was always meant for after we saw him on a racetrack in turbo we also yeah, get cassidy uh, a reporter for the school's tv show and Devin, her bumbling cameraman tommy notices a kid in the class is missing which would be connor mcknight who's practicing soccer instead of going to classes when his goalie asks about them getting in trouble for this our wise and future red ranger has this to say she's a woman and women are just growing up girls uh yeah, yeah. More? i think you said she is freaky <laughs> Hey, Connor, Even I without knowing, it's like to have a soccer ball shoved up your ass. Mm. We also meet Ethan, the local nerd, or at least this show's interpretation of a nerd. Even if she and Kira, wasn't the a villain, yeah, player. she's just freaking. Ethan hacks the school sprinkler system. This is why not everything needs an internet connection, kids. And Kira is mm. berated by Principal Randall for not having a permit for her little jam session. Kira points out that people who play instruments have a higher chance of getting into college. Well. You're hardly college material now, are you, Miss Ford? It was her love of empowering <laughs> youth that got her into this profession. The three are given a week's detention, and Tommy. Yeah, I wonder why she's here in the first place. Like, like I know she's like a villain, and she probably sticks around because of it. But like, why is she here in the first place? <laughs> Discovering that the museum did she is hear that Tommy was Anton Mercer was going to apply for the job, so she became the principal. The three fall into so. a giant sinkhole while a CGI T Rex chases after Tommy. Don't you love how Power Rangers is a show that allows me to read a sentence like that without flinching? Tommy yeah, being it's a badass, fun. Roundhouse he, he, kicks yeah, the dinosaur, Roundhouse but kicks to no it, avail. Yeah. Now Tommy's got to be having deja vu right now. Three wander into a cave while the T-Rex smashes into a road, revealing it to be a robot. Man, serious deja vu. Yeah. The teens discover the entrance to a hidden laboratory and three gems in the center of the room. They each take one as they start to glow. The three run off as the foot soldiers of the season chase after them, Kira suddenly becoming Black Canary thanks to mm. her gem. She also displays some martial arts prowess while Ethan's skin suddenly becomes super strong and rock hard. Connor gains super speed and they fight off the foot soldiers. This is the first real season to truly display what's known as civilian, yeah, powers. civilian powers they were technically present yeah, in ninja storm as yeah, well yeah they're technically present in other seasons before that, well, this but they were using magical this ninja is, powers anyway, this is a so completely different really case count. this season though there's no excuse i do not like civilian powers at all part of the idea of power rangers is that they morph in order to gain superpowers to fight evil that while they might be good fighters as civilians the powers make them well, I, I, I kind of like how they're utilized here simply because they're kind of like a like crutch the just an for like their really civilian no cells, I guess, but until like they, they like slowly Except like really stop using them throughout the series because fights. they don't need them Those anymore. Those fights are supposed to show our heroes kicking ass with martial arts. The next day, Kira gives up her gem to the others, saying she doesn't want anything to do with this. Cassidy says that there's something odd about Tommy, especially after she called Angel Grove High and they wouldn't give her any information about him. I feel like his private record is some big secret. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of thought that was why they called it private records. <laughs> she equally becomes suspicious <laughs> you when she sees the three teams talking to each other, since the three are from different cliques and have never taken a glance at each other before. Why do I get this weird feeling that Cassidy was supposed to be on the set of Mean Girls but got lost and ended up here? On Wednesdays, we're Pink Rangers. Anyway, Kira mm. gets kidnapped by the foot soldiers, and the other two decide to head to Dr. Oliver's house. Ethan is able to find Tommy's address with his phone. Good job keeping that info private, Tommy. Yeah. I know you grew up in the right. 90s, but still. Right the job. two enter his house, and Connor starts playing with his stuff dude the guy's a teacher if he doesn't address it i will
Well, Tommy's gone through four other costume changes, so why not Batman too? The two end up back. Okay, he's probably not gonna dress it. Yeah, the um, that took from what I understand, the guy who plays Connor because is is like oh, the grandson of the guy who played Alfred from the sixties Batman Kira, show. To take the so that's man fun. Rather well, the villain Mesagog is apparently very stealthy since he keeps teleporting behind Kira. Though maybe that's because the camera can't seem to stop spinning. We also meet mm. his henchwoman. You kind of look familiar. My master calls me Elsa. Your master? Yeah, Messagog's into some kinky stuff. Mm. Kira actually manages to fight off Elsa, <laughs> though she seems more surprised by her ability to fight than anything else. A portal suddenly opens up and she escapes through it. Tommy explains that the Tyranodrones weren't meant to be used the way they are, that a few years back he was researching ways of fusing dinosaur DNA and technology. Okay, Tommy, yeah, it, seriously, it, it, what purpose does that kind of research serve unless you plan to become a supervillain with an army of cyborg hmm. T-Rexes? Why? I mean, because it's science, that's why. He was working yeah. with a scientist Sa named science? Anton Mercer, I mean, he was probably, just he was probably planning on making another team of Power Rangers. Kira but, lands like, on top of their car, still. <laughs> and Tommy explains that she went through an Invisiportal, which was completely visible, so the name makes no sense. Oh, and as I mentioned, we sadly still have the stock music from Ninja Storm. You sure about that? The four fight the monster and the Tyranodrones. A little trivia note on Tommy's fighting during the uh, season. Long time th this, fans of the show thing. know that Tommy liked to this say his little fun. fighting, hey and see hey Well, apparently Disney didn't know that and passed on a memo to him asking him to stop swearing during the fight scenes. The forces retreat and Mesagog starts planning an assault on Reefside. Along with the Tyranodrones is Mesagog's other general, Zeltrax. The citizens of Reefside will think that idiot Lothor uh, th that's fun. Go, uh, like love, love the continuity. Already. The next day, the city is engulfed in darkness as Mesagog releases Biozords to attack the city. The teens go to Tommy. Uh, I and wonder they all who head the to Zords lab, will be. Where he explains that he helped build them as well. Tommy further says that the three need to tame the Biozords to stop them. He explains that ever since he found the Dino Gems, he's prepared morphers to harness their powers and use them to become rangers. Aren't you supposed to fly or have superhuman strength and stuff like that? You do. Oh, yeah. I forgot. He also mm. explains that the gems come from the asteroid that originally killed the dinosaurs. Oh, goody! They gain their abilities from the power, power of extinction, extinction and, and genocide. genocide. Always a good feature for your heroes. Of course. He states that Great. the gems chose them and have already bonded with them, but that Mesagog need only destroy them to steal the power of the gems for himself. The three take the morphers. They're still reluctant, and as you may have noticed, they've been bantering a lot in the episode, not really liking each other all that oh, much yeah. because of their differing interests. Yeah, the However, different Tommy clicks gives and stuff them a like pep talk. But you're gonna have to believe in yourselves, because I believe in you. And if you don't believe in yourselves, believe in the Tommy who believes, believes in, in you. you. There we go. The uh -huh. as nope. Zeltrax appears. Dang it. For the it first even time. works I because their Megazord has a drill. Right over. They have their first morphed fight and with Tommy's guidance manage to repel Zeltrax, but he takes to the skies in a big ass ship while the Rangers take control of the Zords. Only one more thing to yeah. do. Bring them together. Well, it's still just one of the coolest the things. The Thundersaurus Megazord doesn't exactly have a great first outing, but it does destroy Zeltrax. I ship. beg to Megazord differ. itself is it, pretty damn good, though the joining sequence is really too fast, in my opinion. Like, Again, it does that. that. It drills through the, the ship era, and like blows it up from the inside. The That's awesome. Sequence. How is that not a great first outing? For their failure. Meanwhile, the Rangers are given bracelets that simultaneously function as communicators and will access their morphers when they need to. Your lives have just changed in ways you probably couldn't have imagined. But as long as you work together and remember you're a team no one can defeat you day of the dino is a pretty good start to the season both for longtime fans and for new viewers oh, yeah. tommy evolving it's, it's, into the role it's of a, mentor it's was a great, great idea it's given a great its popularity opening. among old viewers and any new viewers of the show would be intrigued by the mysteries about him it does suffer some issues pacing acting and off-kilter dialogue but not to any excess but, yeah. the fight that, that's to be expected from any new cast or here and there the team is once again made of teenagers and they actually feel like teenagers save for being stuck in very stereotypical personalities then again, that's how the show began, and with Tommy back, yeah. one could say they're back to basics. Oh, yeah. Now, I know what it's many fun. of you are wondering. Where the heck are Tommy's Zeo powers? He used them in Forever Red, so why doesn't he use them now? Especially since my Ranger teamwork philosophy bullcrap is no longer in effect when he's part of a team now. I'm sure there there's a comic explaining it. But the most popular I've seen is that Tommy drained the power of his part of the Zeo crystal in order to help forge the Dino Gems. I know others have brought up the whole, well, the Zeo powers are always getting stronger, so they might 
might be too powerful thing, but if that were the case, why would he be able to assume the Zeo powers again in Forever Red? Otherwise, it's likely that Tommy's Morpher is in storage somewhere, and he could still assume those powers at some point, but for the moment, there's no need, especially as we'll see in the next few episodes. Mm. Next, we're introduced to Haley, Tommy's confidant and assistant, who's also responsible for creating oh, yeah. the Dino Morphers. Speaking of supporting I'll cast, be honest, like, I really liked, I remember really here. liking sure, Haley, they're toadies, but then, but they're like, convincing but then, like, coming back, I completely forgot she existed when I came back to, Basically, they to, like, watch the show. Which is more than can be said for a lot of evil lackeys. For instance, Messagog asking her for an explanation for something that happened. It would be a waste of your valuable time. Time that are spent destroying Dr. Oliver and his new Power Rangers. Tommy also has some digi-eggs that grow into the team's motorcycles. By the by, I'm not really that fond of the Dino Ranger costumes. The helmets are good, but... I will forever love them, but then again... To me. The central child and nostalgia like the is blind in me, so... Toys and movies stuck on the original Ranger outfits, and the white diamonds down the sleeves and legs don't match when the central colors of their outfits are on the symbol, that being black and gold. Most uniforms are a good balance of white and the primary colors. Unless they're doing something different with the design, like with Ninja Storm's gray areas, this seems to have the opposite problem that the Lost Galaxy uniforms had. Too much color and not enough white. Basically, mm. they should go with the white or the black and gold, not both. Haley runs a cafe where we also meet Trent, who starts working there ah, as a waiter, yes. but is also an aspiring e Even artist. better, Trent's Kira introduced before. Is the only girl in the group crushes like, on him instantly. I'm yeah, not even sure why I'm Trent bringing him up. I don't see him being important in this season. Uh, Might yeah, well just start right. calling him Richie. Messagog's <laughs> method of creating monsters yeah. is a genetic randomizer. I, I, I do like that, that Trent's mutations. introduced very early on before. Snake, chimpanzee, oh, cactus, right, shark, yeah. Golden retriever, and just a smidge of dinosaur. Following that, mm. the monster is hydrated by Messagog to grow. So basically, the monsters this season are those magic growing sponge dinosaur capsules. At the end of the yes. third episode, Tommy is kidnapped. <laughs> I by never the thought villain, of it that way. That is amazing. The 500th episode of Power Rangers. Naturally, for a series that has lasted that long, a Massive and of achievement. Course, it has to be a, show, a clip show. They go all out, do everything they can to make this episode special and the most exciting 22 minutes of television uh -huh. ever made. And yeah, it's a clip show. Though with the awesome title of Legacy of Power. Oh, well, yeah. Messagot Legacy of Power is a really, prisoner, really Haley cool and the Rangers go through Tommy's video journal yeah, of Power it's Rangers a very history. Abridged. His history of Power Rangers, if you will. Yeah. As he's been chronicling the group for years. Yeah, it's a very Since abridged very recap. Abridged, but like, there's a lot Oh, yeah. Hey, there we go. For example, Tanya isn't mentioned at all, and after Lost Galaxy, he stops listing off all the individual members. Yeah, I think it's... Cole doesn't even actually get shown in yeah, civilian Yeah, I think footage. the writers is like, oh, man, we're running out of time. Uh, speed run, speed run. Here's what I don't get. As I said, the post-production team in New Zealand wasn't in the best of shape, so you can understand why they had difficulty with new footage they shot. But how exactly do you screw up the audio of old episodes? Rangers, the power of the Zeo Crystal now resides within you. Rangers, the power of the Zeo oh, Crystal that, now that resides is very within weird. you. There is one cute bit the teens comment on. Connor says that his twin brother went to the Wind Ninja. Ah, uh, right, yeah, a because to the fact that Connor yeah, he was one of the three we saw at the end of Ninja Storm as new students. Yep. Although so much for these secret ninja academies. I also mm. love how Tommy says in the then narration again, that, that it was that the guy wasn't Rangers exactly smart that to begin with. Their biggest challenge, further proving how worthless Lothor was as a villain. Mm. We learn that Messagog's goal is to return Earth to its prehistoric roots and restore dinosaurs as the supreme beings of Earth. Why can't you just want to rule the Earth like all the other sickos? The three utilize an invisiportal to get to Messagog's fortress. They, of course, run into some trouble on the way, but following the Carter Grayson School of Ranger tactics, yeah, shoot they mostly em. shoot their way through while pulling off a damn impressive action scene. Oh, yeah, the Rangers it, it's fun. Rangers morph for some reason and rescue Tommy, proceeding to morph again to pad out yeah, the episode. we had to Tommy pad out the episode crystal that Messagog wanted him to unlock, tricking Zeltrax into breaking it out of its shell. Inside the crystal is a black dino gem, allowing him the power of invisibility. And thus... Aren't you a little old for this, Tommy? Oh, yeah, this is old. fun but I can still pull it off. It's, of course, cool to see Tommy as a yeah. ranger again, but I, I do have to admit, have I think to... it's too early in the season once yeah, again. Yeah, I, I do agree with Link Carl. We should have, way in, like, the we should have, like, usually is. like kept, know, kept going. With... Limited by the Sentai footage, yeah. but I still have to comment on this right, from yeah. a story perspective. Jungle there Fury did it better. Step, like, we got halfway through yet, the entire season things up. with anyway, only Tommy's the three rangers before we finally got RJ as a purple ranger. To make matters better, it even comes with another little zord called the Cephalozord, which can link up with the Thundersaurus Megazord as a new arm like in Wild Force. Where are you going? Shopping. I checked my closet this morning. 
And there's a serious shortage there's of black, black in there. In the following yeah. episode, the elusive <laughs> love, I love it when Power is just cheeky like that. <laughs> they they know they're being trophy. Anton's actually adoptive father, who took him in after his parents died in a cave-in. Tommy says that their experiments have taken on some weird directions, but Anton is strangely aloof about the whole thing. Anton tells Trent that Tommy is a part of his life that he's put behind him and doesn't wish to talk anymore about it. Zeltrax, mm -hmm. during his fight with Tommy, Not says that they have a at settle, though Tommy doesn't know what he's talking about. Trent discovers an invisible in his home that causes him to worry that his father is involved in something not on the level. Yeah. While the Rangers discover a Dimetrozord, providing another arm attachment to the Megazord. However, the main advancement of the storyline comes Oh, yeah. From yeah. I think the first episode White I saw of Dino Thunder was Anton when they bought that, you know, of Trent's artwork, So he's been coming to Haley's before it opens to work on it. You did this? Yeah. This is really good. Eh, not really. Don't get me wrong, it's okay, but Haley makes it sound like he's working on the flippin' Mona Lisa. Elsa, mm. in the meanwhile, discovers a dino gem and takes it before uh, Tommy yes. can get to it. During a conversation between Trent and his okay, father, the, best the latter starts to get disoriented just and sweaty. Trent, Trent, Trent becoming leaves, the white he enters ranger. an invisiportal, though Trent sees it and goes through as well, transported to Messagog's fortress. While there, he finds the white dino gem, which attaches itself to him. He somehow gets out of the fortress and flees, the dino gem forcing him to morph. Elsa later reveals that this particular gem is pure evil. Pure evil? Pure, pure evil. E they send out a monster to find it, but when the rangers go to confront said monster, the white ranger destroys it and reveals himself to them. He walks yeah, through the rangers with little to no effort, par for the course for evil rangers by this point. Tommy eventually joins them, but they're all thoroughly defeated. Yeah, it is par for the, the course, it's just the brutality of it all. It's Trent so apparently great. not remembering what happened. In part two, the white ranger has awoken again and is activating a dino egg to release his zord. When this opens, there will only be one color left in the rainbow. Well, if you want to be technical about it, white isn't really a color in the rainbow. When Trent mm. shows up to work, he's half dead, and Haley orders him to go home after he collapses. The Rangers detect two dino gems, one of which is the White Rangers, and they go out to find them. Trent collapses in the street and becomes the White Ranger again, continuing his work on the egg. Connor and Kira try to fight him, but he once again it, kicks yeah. their asses. Meanwhile, Ethan and Tommy track down the other egg, which is already hatched into the Parasaur Zord. The Parasaur is another arm attachment that's essentially giant yeah, scissors. Yeah, it's giant Tommy scissors. It's great. to go deal with the White Ranger, but Zeltrax intercepts him. After a fierce battle, Zeltrax retreats, but the delay allows the egg to hatch, unleashing the Dragozord. I was unaware that dragons were dinosaurs. Tommy unleashes the makes Stegosaurus sense. Zord that he got in a filler to try to help them, but the White Ranger may have taken control of like, it. Dragons being dinosaurs makes sense, but that is clearly not Megazord. a dragon, you the know? The Megazord launches a huge-ass spear at them, splitting it oh, up. Oh, yeah. Before he can take control it of was... any other Zords, though, Tommy reclaims yeah, control of the Stegosaurus. Yeah, just completely, the White Ranger completely obliterating the Megazord. Like, that was... Otherwise, the three are demoralized, but Tommy says these are the kind of days they can potentially have, and tells them to get some R&R. The three want to keep fighting, but he makes it an order. Enjoy yourselves now, because this is only going to get worse. At a soccer game, Connor spots Trent on a bench and offers to help him, but Trent refuses and walks off. Connor chases after him, but then is attacked by the White Ranger. After a tough battle, it seems like the Not White Ranger suspicious is victorious, at all. but Connor suddenly stands tall and goes into his rather silly-looking super dino mode. I guess objectively it does look hard. silly, but Before the White seeing Ranger this as a kid, Connor, it was though, it was Mesa hype. shows up to offer the White Ranger a chance to join and him. And even then, the White he Ranger didn't win. And goes off, stealing the Stegazord again. Might as well call it the Yo-Yo Zord. Tommy returns turns to the warehouse where he ran into the White Ranger to recover some equipment, only to see it's been taken by their opponent. He finds Trent, who has forcibly morphed into the White Ranger, and fights Tommy. Before a hero can warn Haley of what he's found, the White Ranger encases him in some kind of amber. Following White Thunder, Trent starts to recover more of his memories of what's happening. He quits the cafe, but won't explain why. Elsa and Zeltrax are sent to take the White Ranger by force, but the two are easily brought down. The other Rangers show up, but the three are defeated once again as well. Are you noticing a pattern here? However, when the White Ranger gets a closer look at Kira, well, well, yeah, he but he's her. overpowered. He <laughs> like, <laughs> Kira goes to visit Trent, who yeah. reveals to her that he's the White Ranger. She goes to get the others, but Elsa has found him too, sending out the Tyranna drones to capture him. Ethan and Connor don't think he can be trusted, while Messagog recognizes him as Anton Mercer's son. He tries to get Trent to join him once again, but Trent morphs and escapes. He summons his Megazord, and the Rangers prepare to fight, though Connor tells Kira on no uncertain terms that they have to do whatever mm. it takes to stop Trent. 
Haley also reveals a new dinosaur. Oh, yeah. The, the, the new that was a really cool. Two, that's a really cool a sword, arm, honestly. Combined drill if only because attachment. double drill Radar action. Trent talks to Kira again, saying it's too late for anyone to help him. That the gem Their drills over. will be the he drills that pierce the heavens, you know? Leaves, telling Kira he has to go to prevent himself from hurting anyone. Following that, there's a filler involving a meteor that unlocks recessive personality traits with whoever comes in contact with it. However, at the end, Haley manages to use the radiation from the meteor to free Tommy from the amber. However, once he's freed, they yeah. find that he can't demorph. Behind the scenes, this all occurred because yeah. JDF worked out a deal with the producers that allowed him to go home to the States and visit yeah. his family. He, uh, all he had to do was voice over. So, only doing voiceover during them. After another yeah, attack, I'm glad they could at least, you know, the zords are captured by Yeah, them. they could at least, you know, wrap that into Trent, the story. But Tommy tells them that he was in a similar position to the kid once and they shouldn't give up on him. The white dino jet oh, yeah. assumed full control over him, meaning even when he's demorphed, it's the white ranger that's talking. To throw another uh, wrench it, into it, matters, it was freaking to see Trent actually talking ends, like the white ranger. Mesagog reverts into Anton Mercer, and in the next episode, suck, we learn suck, that it's a surprise, Jekyll surprise. relationship. Consequently, Trent's dino gem power is also to be invisible. While looking through old photos, including this little bit of nostalgia. Wow. Hmm. Nice hair. Hey, it was in style back then. It's fun. Kira and Tommy discover an old picture of him first joining up with Anton Mercer, where he also met a guy named Terrence Smith, or Smitty as Tommy calls him. Terrence was up for the same job as Tommy with Mercer Industries, but Tommy was the one who got it. Smitty went to work for another company, but was apparently killed in an accident. Naturally, mm. it turns out Zeltrax is yeah. Smitty. Na naturally. Our villainous backstory, a clumsy idiot. Anyway, mm. Mesagog found him and reconstructed him using cybernetic components. A backstory that sounds much cooler and darker than it actually is. And I'm still not sure what exactly the revenge is that he wants, though. Right, yeah, that, that, is, that is rather weird. Company. That part wasn't even brought up when he explained his backstory. And considering Mesagog is Anton Mercer, he technically got the long-term employment yeah, with him. Yeah, he, he did. I don't know, maybe he, he ended up like this, but he didn't really bring it up like that. Anyway, Zeltrax had made a deal with Trent that if Trent helped him get Tommy, he'd help take down Mesagog. However, Zeltrax is fiercely loyal to Mesagog and informed him of the plan immediately afterwards. Yeah, there we go. Mesagog to once again offer him the chance to join him properly. This time, Trent accepts, partially because it seems the White Ranger personality is merging with him, so there's a mixture of both present. Zeltrax mm. also reveals that he's kind of got a thing for Elsa. There's an episode that I'm sure people want me to comment on, and that's uh, Lost it, and it's Found the, in Translation. This was so confusing as a kid because I didn't know what Power Super Rangers Sentai was. Made in Japan! So, in actuality, it, it's a badly dubbed version of Abba Ranger, the Sentai yeah. Dino Thunder is based on, and not a very accurate one, apparently, from what hmm. I've heard. I've never watched yeah. Abba Ranger. Uh, it's made like, I have no plans to watch Sentai either. Sentai with it's Connor just... blasting it because it's not American, and that he sees it as Japan making fun of both their country and their efforts. But Kira and Ethan getting into the fun spirit of it. By the end, Connor mm. has turned around on it and ends yeah, up loving it's it. it's fun. It's weird to watch, to say the least, but it's a good lesson for purists from either side of Power Rangers Hey, there we Sentai. go. See, their show is different, but it was still cool. I laugh at this because I still get the occasional comment from people who are frustrated that I don't watch the Sentai. It's just I don't have any interest in it. Power yeah. Rangers is what I grew up with and am nostalgic for. But I S can appreciate same that we wouldn't have the series without Sentai, but they are, in the end, different products. I would hope by now, after Mega Ranger versus In Space, Mighty Morphin going for three seasons and its own twists and turns versus the three different Sentai they took footage from, and even Dino Thunder versus Abba Ranger, people would accept that. I mean, unless Abba Ranger had a mentor who was previously from Zhu Ranger. Still, if you mm. want to see me talk about Sentai a bit, right, I'll yeah. remind you I did actually watch Wars these Wall, videos that he did. Main show. Simply because Mega Force was a handful of reviews incredibly for Gokai, stupid, Jiu and so Ranger, and even some common Yeah, Rider. I really anyway, want to see how the, that, how the Sentai actually Trent pulled it off. For the position of second in command, with Trent winning through. Later, Mercer tells his son that he's worried about what the Dino Gem has done to him and explains his backstory. I was sure I was on the verge of a whole new technology. And so he drank it. One that would serve the better because of mankind. course. Because why you decided to drink it? Science! For a series of events, Science frames Trent for the destruction of some of Mesagog's experiments. As a result, Mesagog ties down Trent and tries to kill him. However, Mercer's personality breaks through and redirects the beam meant to kill him. It bounces off everything and hits the Dino Gem, shattering the coating that created the other personality while keeping the power itself active. Yep, his father has freed him from the White Ranger personality. Unintentionally. Yeah. Where was I? Um, pure, 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 
evil. evil. Mercer tells his son to use it however he sees fit, but mostly he should help the Rangers, since otherwise there's no chance he'll be free of Mesagog. However, Trent promises that he won't reveal a secret, which I've got to say is the dumbest thing you yeah, can do. Yeah, that, that is pretty now dumb. the Rangers Not gonna won't lie. pull their punches if they ever go up against Mesagog directly. Trent unlocks his own Super Dino mode, which looks yeah. especially silly. Though I like the Katar yeah, he has. It's even got though I have a bit spikes of a out of the wrist. Wobble. It's cool. After Trent saves his life, Tommy allows him to join them. However, at the end of the episode, it's revealed that Zeltrax saved the monster of the day's weapon, a copying device that allows him to create a duplicate uh, of the that entire Ranger, episode. Honestly, was no really trace really of cool. Trent within him. The copy retains like the copy the monster was like literally the copying the Ranger's this was weapons and using them against them. Of the them. Sentai, apparently, it took a while longer for him to join up with the Abba Rangers, so the show wanted to utilize more of the footage of him as a villain, hence the clone. Later, Trent and Tommy go out to uncover an ancient artifact called the Shield of Triumph. Connor comes to help, and Tommy explains that only someone uh, yeah, the, with the universal yeah, the, dino energy can retrieve it. Yeah, Whatever the, the, the hell whole, that like, is. Does he mean the Triassic thing? The Rangers all contribute to the power, allowing Connor's form to upgrade into the Triassic Ranger. The downside oh, yeah. is the power-up needs the other Rangers to contribute their energy to it, demorphing them at least for two episodes right. before they and find the, a way around it. So what was even the point? Along with the it, Triassic powers, it was a neat thing. You know, the other Rangers, Rangers had to contribute their energy. Like, During the vehicle's but, trial run, Zelda guess, and Tommy yeah, enter into a final battle aboard Mesagog's ship. Tommy, deciding to end the feud once and for all, destroys him along with the ship. A frankly anticlimactic end of the subplot. Hell, the episode where it happened was a Kira-focused episode. Mm. Anyway, the vehicle can also become the Mesodon Megazord, once again adding to the Ranger's arsenal. You may have also noticed that I haven't commented very much on Cassidy and Devin. At the yeah, time they the mostly just been some filler stuff. To compare them to Bulk and Skull, but yeah, it's really not. Is no yeah, comparison. it's not like Bulk, Bulk and Skull. Bulk when they began like, were bullies and didn't care about school, and as yeah, a result, Cassidy and Devin are something else entirely. Sense. Cassidy is just a selfish idiot because. She wants to be a reporter? Devin, on the other hand, well, while reporters are self-minded, is intelligent anyway. and skilled. He's practically Cassidy's slave because he has a crush on her, but even that will only go so far considering the lengths he goes for her. It should be noted yeah, that but he's also really seasons, dumb, the Sentai so... was still going on at the same time as the Power Rangers version was being written. As such, the writers didn't know what they were going to be able to use with the Sentai footage or where the Sentai story was going. Jackie Marchand has confirmed that when the Abba Ranger equivalent of the Triassic Ranger was brought up, it was believed that he was actually a sixth Ranger for the team, hmm. and there were some some plans made for Devin to become the Triassic okay, Ranger, but that's they pretty, dropped yeah. it when it was clear that it was but just the, a power it, it's, Red yeah, it's just, Anyway, yeah, it was Cassidy just deliberately up. puts herself in harm's way on foolish and moronic errands just to get an exclusive story, interrupting the Rangers in the middle of a fight to try to get an interview. Hell, she once ignores the closed sign on Haley's Cafe for completely vapid reasons that rely on other people actually being there, even though, since the place is closed, logically, no one would be there mm. for her. However, as time goes on, Kira gets a job as an intern for a TV station, and Ethan, after accidentally hooking up with Cassidy for a date, actually befriends her. Through the mutual acquaintance, Kira yeah. manages to land Cassidy a reporting There we go, there, there is the some station, character development for her. Kira for it. So afterwards, she remains shallow, but has a few deeper levels to her. Yeah, there we go. And, well, that makes her nicer. I just wouldn't compare the two to Bulk and Skull yeah, is it, all. Yeah, After 10 like, episodes of staying morphed, yeah, Tommy that's, discovers I think that's an insult that they to, to finally both, demorph you know, him. However, the effects you know, of it kick duos. in his Dino Gem power and turns him invisible without being able to shut it off. You know, come to think of it, 10 episodes is the equivalent of, like, at least several days, if not a few weeks. So how is he able to eat? Maybe he could take off his helmet, but then why didn't he ever take it off while the others were around? Anyway, mm. this plot is resolved in the episode Fighting Spirit. Haley believes she's found ah, a way to bring Tommy go. back to this normal, but doesn't have a proper power source for her it's, device. Tommy yeah, I think at some point, like gem, after, like, um, is reluctant once the White Ranger was, powerful. like, when they turned it, good, it turned system, good, like, I think I, like, Dino gem I didn't see, like, any more of Dino Sally's Thunder, like, again, after so that, simply because I just didn't have the VHSs. While the Rangers hey, have to deal with a powerful but, monster, Tommy is taken to a hospital. So I, I just straight Tommy's up didn't mind, see the rest however. of Dino Thunder because I didn't have access to it. And, uh, Remember me? and so I only found out about Tommy all this stuff Ranger like five, but way later on down the line. They then away. The Though Ranger I do remember like looking it up on YouTube and like finding like Tommy the Ninja Storm Dino Thunder crossover. I was like, they teamed up? And so I watched that. White Ranger. 
Air Trans must march on, White Ranger. If Power Rangers had been made in the 80s, Tommy could have had a mullet. Tommy, of course, yeah, manages yeah. to fight him off, leading into an overgrown forest for the final confrontation. The appearance of the Dragon Dagger alerts him to the Green Ranger's arrival. Okay, I'm happy we finally got him a proper shield, but what the hell's going on with the helmet? You showed the Green Ranger back in Legacy of Power. Mm. Was there a big silver stripe along the top of the Green Ranger helmet? No. Me? Who so cares? Why did you add one? Jeez, maybe Tommy's coma did some brain damage. Anyway, the Green Ranger defeats him, but Tommy promises to never give up. This is somehow all that was needed. The Green Ranger reveals that he passed the test. Zeal Ranger 5 coming in to say that he's been fighting for his life. And you've proven your will to live is stronger than any Ranger power. Was it ever in doubt that Tommy didn't want to mm. die? Well, we'll get to that when we analyze yeah, we'll, the we'll, character for this. Yeah, season. we'll, we'll anyway, get to that. Anyway, the gym is restored, it's and Tommy shows up and helps the other Rangers, even unlocking his Super Dino mode. In the next episode, Zeltrax inexplicably returns and. Well, I think he's gotten over his crush for Elsa. Mm. Connor, having a crush on some girl of the week, activates his battleizer when Zeltrax kidnaps her. Hey, she her. comes back. She kind of comes out of nowhere. And it, wait, yeah, I mean, the battleizer gives him Mr. Fantastic arms? Yeah, that, 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 that is The battleizer's weird. ridiculousness this time, aside from the stretch arms, comes in goofy, huge shoulder pads. Yeah, that, 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 like, around flip, whenever yeah, they, they like, moves. Yeah. Anyway, using the battleizer, Connor defeats Zeltrax, but the like, from a distance, it looks cool, but whatever upon happened closer to him, inspection. Though, has changed his attitude about Mesogon. Tell your master he will never again treat me as a slave. He made me, but he will never destroy me. During a fight with the Rangers, Zeltrax suddenly vanishes when the White Ranger clone reminds him of how Mesagog gave him life. That's never brought up again. It's just mm. a thing. Thanks for that pointlessness. In the next episode, Trent tries to get his father to let him talk to the other Rangers and have them help him, but he refuses, wanting to settle things himself. Yeah, you're doing a bang-up job of it, Anton. Yeah, yeah. Stay the Great course. Great job. Meanwhile, back at Mesagog's fortress, the White Ranger clone collapses in pain. Elsa says that this was only a matter of time. Yep. When Zeltrax created you, Too much pink energy is dangerous. Thing Same thing with the, the other the energies. Can exist simultaneously. The clone challenges the other to a fight, attempting to destroy them with his zords, but he can't sustain himself long enough to continue the fight, and he loses control over his zords. In the mm. wake of his defeat, the clone goes to fight Trent, conveniently going to his super dino mode so the audience can tell right, which one yeah. is which. After a fierce battle, the clone is defeated, and the remaining yeah, the power fact is that, yeah, reabsorbed Trent into beat, Trent's like, dino gem. You know, and his once clone, again, feels but, but, but stronger? Sure, That's impressive. Was awesome, but from a story perspective, the clone didn't really do much other than be a standard henchman. I think it would have worked better if Trent had been separated from his powers completely, and he had to reclaim them later. Yeah, plus that, making that'd his be saga cool. a neat parallel to Tommy's. Evil Ranger becomes good, loses his power, then gets them back again. Anyway, our story continues with ah, the and here comes the crossover. Lunch. When they're gone, though, the ground opens up. Kira spots Blake at the cafe, thinking she's seen him somewhere before. She goes up to ask him about it, but he only figures it's because of his work as a motocross rider. He invites her to a show, and we cut to the Wind Academy. Mm. Tori, Shane, and Dustin are training some students, and obviously doing a lot better than they used to back in their time. Oh, yeah. The three have come full circle from where they started, showing them use their skills that they didn't do too well with originally. No, great they even tell their it. students the same thing the sensei had told them about how they need to consider how committed they are to their ninja training. They receive a mm. message from the sensei telling them to meet them at the highest point in the city at sunset and to tell no one what they're doing. For some reason, the three arrive there. at what is clearly the afternoon and not sunset. Right, the sensei yeah. tells them that Lothor has come back. They're naturally worried since they've lost their powers, but fortunately, the sensei says that Cam has been working on three new wind morphers, which he then gives them. Oh, them. very However, convenient. However, when they activate them... Let's do it. And there we go. Okay, Cam, we're going to need to issue a product mm. recall. That's a pretty big design yeah. defect. And yeah, the whole thing was a trap by Lothor, yeah. and now they're evil. And it the works because Sensei and Lothor share the same actor. So, you know. And finds the message, along with some slime that he recognizes was at the Abyss of Evil. Because I guess he made sure to take note of the slime from it during the season finale. Lothor goes to the Ninja Academy with new monsters in tow. Apparently, the morphers Lothor gave them do work, yeah. allowing the three to morph and capture the other Ninja Academy. Yeah, it students. wasn't all talk. Lothor's nieces, to save their own skin, say they'll work for him again. Back at Tommy's lab, Haley says she's been getting strange readings from the Ninja Academy and that she's been in contact with Cam before. Speaking of, Cam returns to the Academy to find it in ruins and calls Hunter away from the Thunder Academy. Blake gets the call as well and says goodbye to the three Dino Rangers, who in turn are called away by Tommy. 
They explain the situation to the Dino uh, Rangers. That seems and the strangely familiar. Are sent to deal anyway. with the mind-controlled Wind Rangers. Trent and Tommy stay behind in case Mesagog tries to take advantage of the situation. The two Ranger teams engage one another, but the Dino Rangers are clearly at a disadvantage. Which kind of makes sense. Yeah. Nothing against the Dino Rangers themselves, because I do yeah, honestly but, like them. But the Ninja Academy students have had yeah, years of yeah, training. Yeah, there we go. It was them, just a lot more experience Rangers on have said their before side. that they're not as into doing even basic training. Cam and the Thunder Rangers spot the fight as the Dino Rangers are forced to retreat. Meanwhile, Mesagog himself watches the fight and recognizes the Kelzaks. Lothor, he's a fool. Yes but one that could prove most useful. Elsa is sent to speak with Lothor, ending part one. Cam leads the Thunder Rangers to the Abyss of Evil so they can retrieve their own powers from it. Lothor meets with Mesagog, who offers Sorry, him an alliance quiet. to just, deal with the Dino yo, Rangers. I'm, I'm the just Abyss, enjoying three it. Finds their like, even if it is just a glorified Andalus. recap. At the cafe, the Ninja Rangers suddenly show up and attack the three. They convince the ninjas that they're not going to risk damaging the standing sets of the show. I mean, that they'll meet somewhere of their right. choosing to fight yeah, without any go. backup from either side. Shane asks why they'd agree to that it's called honor i thought you ninjas knew all about that well they're evil epic, now so why would they care ninja about stare honor? Down. the two teams show up to the fight and the dino rangers use their enhanced abilities to fend off the ninja abilities gotta say the fights are pretty dang impressive oh yeah even if i'm not this... fond of the civilian powers it feels very oh, yeah. much this like is, a super this is a really brawl, cool fight honestly more impressive than what you would sometimes see in movies that aren't nearly as fast paced Cam and the Thunder Rangers show up, and Kira suddenly remembers that she saw Blake in the video record as a Power Ranger. However, the three say they've come to help the ninjas, that Lothor has shown them the error of their ways. Cam then gives them new power discs for their morphers. Of course, it was a trick, and it frees them from Lothor's yeah, there control. We go. The How Dino fun. Rangers bring them all back to the lab and explain what happened. With 11 Rangers on hand, they show up at the quarry to meet Lothor and, and Mesagog's forces head on. And of course, course. everyone morphs. Hilarious time. shows off yeah. how there are like half a dozen different morphing calls that all have to be said quickly to fit in the runtime. Yeah, this, this is just fun. I don't care if it's fast. It's fun. Fun sequence, though sadly just using some generic background music instead of the theme songs. Thunderstorm yeah. is a pretty good team up. It does do something new by having the two teams actually fight against each other, both in civilian and morphed form. The downside is that it doesn't make the Dino Rangers look all that great. The situation with the possessed Wind Rangers is only resolved by Cam and the Thunder Rangers, while the Dino Rangers are on the defensive the entire time. One thing a team-up should never do is denigrate one team over another, and yeah. sadly this makes the Dino Rangers look less powerful and less effective. The fights have the Dino team thinking of new strategies and shows them as competent fighters, but the overall narrative feels more about the Ninja Storm team. The ending battle yeah, is a fair. special effects fest, which is rather disappointing given how previous team up final yeah, fights Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, but it's still arts. really cool what to look. What I will look. say about look it, though, it. is that it does use both theme songs well in the fight itself, which is always something I enjoy in the fights. It mm. also has badly used explosions, which is something I'll get into next time. Like yeah, I said, the two parts are still good and enjoyable, everybody. and there's a lot to like, but compared to reinforcements from the future and to the 10th power, it probably comes in third so far in terms of regular team up episodes. Mm. Both Lothor's nieces free the ninja students and rejoin the rangers. Mesagog and Lothor, meanwhile, yeah, and they, fight one another they, back in his fortress. Yeah, this is a really good fight. Have a much more impressive brawl. I'll say one thing. I may think Lothor is a terrible villain and good riddance to him, but he was one hell of a fighter. Oh, the yeah, he knew how to fight. really damn good. It ends when Mesagog uses his mental abilities to shove Lothor into one of his jars. The epilogue of the episode Honestly, shows I that, Honestly, I think a missed opportunity was Lothor just not Storm using him only as the base as for one of his monsters. That would have been really cool. Is Mara, one of Lothor's nieces, and the two comment on how pretty the other is. Because they're, because they're the, the same actor. The same actress. <laughs> oh, and another neat little addition. For the two-parter, the ending shot of the theme song shows all the Rangers instead of just the main five. Elsa, as time goes on, worries more and more about her standing with Mesagog since... Well, she sucks at her job and continually fails. As mm. such, she plots to take out Anton Mercer, since that's when Mesagog is at his weakest. Later, in the episode House of Cards, Tommy witnesses Elsa transform as the principal, discovering the truth about her. I have to give you credit. We should have seen it. No kidding. It's not yeah, even like a Clark Kent like, thing where she assumed a different posture. Yeah, she, she's just she a She was bitch. a evil jerk in both her forms. <laughs> like, As the two fight, it goes outside and the entire school sees Elsa transform. Thus, her cover is blown and she has to flee. 
Later, when the group runs into Anton Mercer again, and, and they yeah, spot him transforming into Double reveal, Bell. everybody. And so the cat's out of the bag for the villains. Acknowledging to Elsa that Anton Mercer is a weakness to him, Mesagog drinks a potion that splits off Anton from his body. The penultimate episode is a clip show. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think Mesagog becomes a, throughout the season, a well less interesting villain after that Trent happens. Again. Of course, in my mind, the bigger issue isn't that he lied to them, but rather if his father is their enemy, they run the risk of him pulling his punches when they can't afford him to do so. The season comes to a close in the two-parter Thunderstruck. Mesagog has finished work on a transfiguration. The gyroscope of doom. Oh no. Into mutant dinosaurs. Did he they just have that lying around and just wanted to so put meantime, someone in it? He decides to strap Elsa in and drains the power that he granted her. Trent, using his camouflage powers, observes this and learns of the separation. While the Rangers prepare for the school prom, Tommy and Haley work on a truck that they can use to breach Mesagog's fortress, especially armed with the knowledge Trent provided them with. Trent explains what happened to Elsa and talks about his plan. He'll deliver the Dino Gems to Mesagog, then open a portal for them to come charging through. They decide they have no other choice, since Mesagog will find a way to turn his device on either way. Elsa's yeah, memories return, but she's no because, longer like, under the yeah, villain's Trent, control. Trent was like, there was the a lot of trust issues Trent involved. Out. Trent. But he manages to wake so, up long enough to activate the portal, which just happens to be a big of red course, button it's a big red portal button. control. Yet that must never ever ever be pressed. Be idiot -proof. Or perhaps this is a Batman thing, as suggested at the start of the series, and Mesagog is like the Adam West Batman, labeling everything. Hey. And yet no Ranger repellent bat spray. The Rangers head hey, out to fight some like, Piranha drones. Of course, while he goes into that much depth, but won't go into Co she Connor's time, actor being a huge oh, okay, ass whatever. laser at his fortress. Trent grabs the Dino Gems and stays behind to look for his father, while Mesagog collapses in front of his throne. The Rangers escape, though Trent's fate is unclear. Fortunately, Ethan has been reading TV tropes and says that it's not like they're gonna fall out of the sky in front of us. What? Last time I did that, but it worked. <laughs> like at the very beginning of the season. season. However, See? Zeltrax <laughs> enters their lab and starts blasting everything, taking Elsa with him to end part one. The Rangers return to the lab to find it in ruins. They check the black box and discover what Zeltrax did. Mercer blames himself for what happened, but Tommy tells him to quit whining. But if there were no Mesogog, we can't go back and change what's happened. Mesogog is gone. We should be thankful for that. Zeltrax constructs a new Zord, and holy crap, yeah, it, it just blew it, it up, blew a, up mountain. a mountain. Uh, anyway, he keeps yeah. Elsa inside of the Zord as a human freaky. shield. Tommy and Kira infiltrating the thing, while the others directly engage it in their own Megazords. The Megazord's drill attack provides a convenient getaway for the Rangers, allowing Elsa to escape. Tommy and Kira destroy Zeltrax, for realsies this time, yeah, and for, the rest for real of the Zords this time, don't worry. They're forced to follow the TJ maneuver of setting their Zords on self-destruct and sacrificing them to destroy Zeltraxes. However, to really bump the rangers out after losing yeah the because it's a Nessagog finale we need to up, we need to get rid of everything enough of the dino gems energy to complete his transformation witness the face of your final battle it's a rather stupid face honestly honey yeah. you got real ugly yeah also spots there we Cassidy go and devon recording the team as they morph and face off against the mutated mesagog <laughs> the five charges just a fun thing they just like, mode but sadly their slow motion whatever. and silly rubber additions aren't enough to stop him even connor's oh, no. paralyzer fails to impede him and he starts replicating the only way they can find to stop him is by uniting the power of their dino gems and unleashing them on the four mesagogs they succeed but the dino gems are completely drained cassidy and devon reveal themselves and hand over the tape to them since cassidy realizes that ruining their lives to make yeah. it all better would be wrong. And thus, prom time. Character Connor development, goes everybody. with a one-shot girl, and Ethan goes with a girl he met in line for a movie. Trent tells Tommy yeah, that he's planning on going to an art school in the fall. Mercer and Elsa look like they're gonna get together. Tommy's gonna stick around. I was thinking of staying here teaching living a quiet life you know invent some kind of master morpher or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. for all my old suits when I saw them again. I just want to say we've had an interesting year. We've been through a lot. More than any school should have to go through. But we made it. Hey, remember when I kicked a robot dinosaur? Yeah, that, that was, was weird. awesome. Kira performs on the stage with a brief montage of clips to send us off and end the season. Yeah. A great finale, Dino honestly. Thunder is an excellent series. Yes. Many praise it simply for the return of Tommy, but the fact is Tommy's presence no, it, is just it, a nifty like, addition to an already it's a nifty solid addition. show. Like, it's, Dino Thunder succeeds in almost It's a great idea area. with an the excellent execution. Fantastic, save for a few moments scattered throughout. The characters are well developed and each given a chance to really shine. No one feels left out. Most of the jokes are genuinely funny with great oh, banter. Yeah. Like, the villains are equally well developed, though their defeats aren't exactly the stuff of legend, which is where we have the only major flaws of the season. There's a lot of great build-up for most 
most of the stories. Yeah. A little in actual Like, tale. all, all, all that, yeah, I, 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 up, I have to The agree. resolutions leave a lot to be desired. I do like that it was his father that freed Trent from the White Ranger personality, but I don't like that it just kind of happened unexpectedly. It's brought mm. up that Zeltrax has a crush on Elsa, but nothing comes yeah, of it nothing after comes it's of first it. mentioned. Having a second White Ranger who's evil could have brought about some interesting possibilities, but really it probably was just confusing to anyone who jumped into the middle wondering why the hell there were two yeah, Rangers that, that, that exactly probably been very on either confusing. side of the fight. Hell, the evil White Ranger didn't even start questioning anything about his own existence, you know, standard am I a real boy kind of stuff, until his final episode. Until then, he was just a lackey. Still, I like the minor nod to continuity, unintentional as it may be, that they made with him. See, as we might recall, Too much pink energy is dangerous. Pink energy is and dangerous. the there we go. line is, this probably demonstrates that the morphing grid can't handle a duplication of the same powers. Too much I white can't believe Linkara popularized While that joke and it appeared in the actual special. There are two brief sequences that some list as part of the season run, though only one is partially significant. The second is just Tommy practicing martial arts and giving a very brief abridged story of his life as a ranger. The other was an extra on the Dino Thunder DVDs oh, yeah. and takes and place right after the events of the main series. And it, it's just a tease for us, baby. archival history of the Dino Rangers' is time, but keeps running into technical issues. With Kira's help, they uncover a large stone beneath the cafe's floor, which people have said is a physical representation of the morphing grid itself. It shows the two images of the future, really just a preview of the next season. Yeah, it's not anything actually important, but it's neat to see the two again in events taking place after the series. Nessagog is a great villain. Menacing, Dark, oh yeah, the like he, for he's freaky. Were really well done. He still had a take over the world mentality, but his reasoning was different than others who wanted to conquer simply for the sake of conquering. He believed in the superiority of dinosaur DNA, which probably makes him the first villain motivated by bigotry. Yeah, okay, maybe yeah. Rancic, but as we discussed in the Time Force video, the mutant thing was only but, the yeah, that, that, when really he right. wanted overall power and destruction. Zeltrax's motivations yeah, was, are a little less clear. Again, yeah. when he explains who but, he yeah, is, mes he never mes even is a villain. getting the like, job over top, him top tier. Company, so what does he want revenge against Tommy for? After he first dies, the shift in his loyalty is weird too, especially since he went to all the trouble of framing Trent and all. Elsa's also a pretty good henchwoman. At times, her acting isn't all that great, but otherwise, she often comes off as imposing, and she was a competent fighter in her own right too. She's just a great lackey, and it was nice to have her turn oh, good yeah. at the end. The Tyrannodrones were visually very imposing, but lacked anything particularly charming about them. They just kind of growled, and their features were so dark that often you couldn't make out where individual ones were in a crowd. Yeah, there fair was enough. a second squad of foot soldiers who appeared briefly, the Triptoids, yeah, but, but they were hardly like, ever mentioned or used. It just right. kind of looked goofy sometimes. But hey, it let them use more sentai It was sentai a special footage. episode Haley they showed up. was the alpha of the season, and she did nothing. No, really. She was just there for technical support. I don't recall her ever having even a focused episode. She was just yeah. there. We don't even yeah, know like I said, I remember Tommy liking her as a kid, but then... Or anything like that. But Connor is yeah, she didn't do anything, so I didn't, Upon I didn't remember her when coming back to the series. Which one's mine? I'm kidding. Are you so weren't kidding? Well, early on, mm. he was motivated by rather selfish intentions, even wanting to give up his ranger powers early on so he could focus on his soccer career, his tune changed. Hell, in White Thunder Part 3, he expresses more concern for Trent and abandons his soccer game to try to help him. Sure, by the end of the series, he was still an idiot, but he was more compassionate. But yeah, Trent there we is go. a tortured character. He's being pulled yeah, in multiple tortured's directions word for time it. in the series. <laughs> by his adoptive father, by the White Ranger, by Messagog, etc. He admits at one point that he only knows how to draw superheroes, which might explain his demeanor and his desires. In the episode, Truth and Consequences, he says he always kind of hoped he'd yeah, become the a superhero. Yeah, the secret part four to, end, to White is Thunder. What a Power Ranger is. However, in his mind, he's probably approaching from a stereotypical point of view, thinking them to be perfect and never needing help in matters. It's why he keeps running away from the Rangers initially. He feels he should be able to overcome the darkness inside of him on his own. However, as he keeps getting pushed into the role of a villain, he eventually is overcome by his inability to ask for help. His yeah. slower development and introduction was very well done, and he could have easily just been a B cast member without any real development like in the early days of Power Rangers, but instead, as we got to know him, we started to care about him. Ethan is purportedly a video gaming geek and techie. I say purportedly because he falls into the yeah. same trap a lot of TV shows and movies are forced to do. Yeah, but then Whenever again, this is like 2004, so... geeky science fiction thing, it's of course yeah. something completely made up for the show. Now, I understand the potential legal ramifications of mentioning copyrighted material. Sometimes studios care, sometimes they don't. But it's a really annoying habit to see. 
It doesn't make him sound like a geek. It makes him sound like a moron who's trying to pretend to be right, a geek. Right, yeah. And it's even weirder I won't, when I won't they lie about mention that. Batman in the first episode. Though what yeah, I do like yeah. about him is that he's not a completely stereotypical oh, yeah. geek. Oh, yeah. The this, episode this is Bully yeah. for Ethan. A yeah, Bully for Ethan. That, that's a great episode. Now, more. the stereotypical kind of show would have Ethan always trying to act nice or be a coward compared to the bully. But, but no. Said, this takes a bit more realistic tone with that. No, Ethan he talks back. back. in every confrontation. Sure, not physically, but he's verbally arguing with the guy. He's not going to take any of this crap and in the real world someone who is tough enough to fight back will sure in the end he convinces the bully not to fight and makes friends with him but he does it a lot more believably oh, yeah. and, well in a more original fashion i really like it kira is a harder nut to crack you can't even like say Connor, they're friends was it, they're just like of the look, ranger stuff let's agree to really disagree pin down what it was that motivated her to be a ranger other than it was just the right thing to do her character arc seemed to be mostly about her music and learning to follow her own individual instincts and personality and not become all about her image emphasis sized in one episode where she has a chance for a larger music career, but only if she's forced to look like one of Lady Gaga's rejected outfits. Mm. But there really wasn't anything beyond that for her. It's very interesting watching Tommy from his early days and then seeing him where he is in Dino Thunder the way I have. Particularly the episode Game On demonstrates an evolution of his character. The teens complain to him about doing training. Right, so yeah. He he's like, all the you time guys aren't altruists. He's measuring <laughs> teenagers who aren't like he was as a kid. They don't care about big charity causes and clubs. Oh yeah, they don't really like school and they're not we're modern in teenagers so we're not orphan teens yeah were, quite frankly very idealized goody goods yeah these teens feel it more isn't real, like back the in the day part, in that they have character flaws you can just see the dumbfounded look on his face as he tries to comprehend the kids these days. right yeah it's Fighting funny spirits, and by extension where he was permanently morphed or was invisible may show a darker side to tommy's character mm. he's been fighting the forces of evil for a very long time as a ranger longer than any other person we've seen i was confused by why and fighting spirit it was all a test about his willingness to go on fighting for so long especially in a struggle that never seems to have an outcome could have a psychological impact on anybody and tommy more so because of who it is he's fighting this time mm. people you know and care about are trying to kill you have you noticed when he became stuck in his uh, morph okay form, i don't get that reference that that's how he saw himself all the time as a ranger he wasn't tommy oliver he became the powers it was all he was anymore mm. when Haley brought him out of the morphed form he was invisible once again the power was all he was so whoever tommy oliver was didn't have any actual image to him when Haley once again freed him the powers were shattered and he retreated into his own mind having to face all the previous powers that led him to who he was he had to overcome his identity mm. crisis of being the powers is he the green ranger the white ranger the red ranger the black ranger he's not no. he's tommy he's oliver. tommy oliver and being tommy oliver had to be what he lived for mm. yeah it's just my own nonsense interpretation but it's what i got out of the whole thing do you know who you are who the power rangers is not who you are much more than the power rangers tommy Dino Thunder mm. is just a fun ride from start to finish, especially if you were a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan. Mind you, it's yeah. not just about time. Like, even if you, even if you didn't grow, grow up watching it like me, and growing as people like, while they fight the or grow up watching it's Mighty Morphin like me, you can still enjoy Dino Thunder a hell of a, a lot. Next season, we enter what is referred to by fans as the Kalish era, where opinions yeah, about the okay. seasons start to become either mixed I never or just actually saw like SPD. loathed. But we'll talk about that when we call out for Power Rangers SPD. All right. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm get, yeah, I'm gonna guess there's a little thing after after this here. I'm I'm gonna stick around for it. So. Yes. Yes. Very fun. How do you know it's whack? You haven't even given it a chance. It wasn't even made here. I mean, what would they know about Power Rangers in Japan? <laughs> Hello, my friends. Yeah, all right. Take a moment to like this okay. Video, subscribe to the channel. And click okay, the I'll let I'll let this play out. But like, yeah, releases. all right. Like, like I said, I disagree with some Patreon, of the stuff he said, but that's it's mostly only like um. Check out the t-shirts available. For no, it's mostly subjective stuff, watching. and part of me kind of wishes he talked more about you know the White Ranger and just yeah it yeah it's par for the course for evil rangers to beat the crap out of the out of the current rangers at this point, but. The, it's just the way it's presented in Dino Thunder is Trent's absolute decimation of the of the Dino Thunder Rangers is a sight to behold. And I heavily recommend the whole thing because I believe like most of the episodes are available for free on YouTube, like by the official source. I mean, it's not you're not, you know, watching an illegal download. No, I believe most of the not filler episodes are 
you can just find on YouTube for free, and it's fun, um, including White Thunder. So, yeah, like I said, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. It's great. But, yeah, um, I'm going to guess he's, um, you know, doing the remake of SPD next, and who knows about what's next for Power Rangers, because from what I can tell, Cosmic Fury is basically the finale to the series before... They either A, continue it, or B, um, reboot it, because that's what I've heard, at least. Um, there was a reboot plan, but because of the writer's strike, they, like, that, that plan has been pushed back. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, if there's one thing Power Rangers has always done in the years, it's no matter what, it's going to survive whether the studios want it to or not, because it, it just has a lot of staying power. But, yeah. Fun, fun, fun history of Power Rangers video. I'm glad, I'm glad I sat down here and reacted to it. Look, we'll, we'll see how, it's probably the only history of Power Rangers video I'm probably going to react to, um, unless he does RPM, but I highly doubt it because RP, his, his, um, videos on RPM are more, um, are more, like, mod, are mo definitely more modernized, and I don't think he really needs to go full, full on, um, you know, remaking it. Maybe, I mean, it's not available on YouTube, at least not by hit at least not on his channel, but, but maybe, maybe he'll, like, re-release it, like, maybe in, like, all in one big part, even though all four parts are really long, so, yeah, um, don't really have any, anything else I can say, so I'll just end the video here, so, yeah, till next time, guys, see ya.